Don't ever, never stop that. Can't have a pimp preacher and his wife. It's too much for some folks. It's just too much. My man, Doug Dynasty, how you doing, bro? <laughs> it's real, ain't it? <laughs> Woo, God. Y'all, this is, this is, this is, man, this is so much fun. This is so much fun. First, I'm going to get the Simple Church. That's incredible what y'all do out here for people, having everybody come out here and giving tickets away and, and coming out and giving something back at Christmas. You know, because Christmas, Christmas can be funky sometimes. You know, Christmas can be fun and sometimes it can be funky. When you're a child, Christmas is fun. When you're a parent, Christmas is funky. I mean, for children, you need to know the truth about Santa. Santa, he buys most of the expensive stuff. Santa brings all the expensive stuff, and your parents, we get the cheaper stuff. So if you didn't get what you wanted, that's Santa's problem. <laughs> so don't be getting mad at us. Santa did not hear what you did. He must have saw you do something. I, ain't, I can't get involved in your life. But if you didn't get your Xbox or your PS4, you did something to somebody, and Santa saw it. And that's why you got a doll. <laughs> How many, so, see, I look at, I look at my Christmas, see, I'm, I'm, how many people here from the 70s celebrated Christmas in the 70s? See, so Christmas in the 70s was a whole lot different because there was nothing that was over $4. You, you, just got, you just got basic stuff like some socks, some pants that your brothers used to have. It looks just like your brother's pants. It was a miracle how Santa brought your brother's pants to you. That was crazy. Oh, my brother gets some pants just like that, just as tight, just as high. Now kids, they want smartphones, y'all want iPads, you want phones better than your parents. Your parents got a jacked up flip phone, like the preacher said, a flip phone, but their hands broke, they can't even text. You at school trying to text your parents, Dad, can I go to my friend's house? The C don't work, I can't even put the C in, I'm trying to, I got to skip over stuff. So I want, this is, this is for the young people this, this, this year, for 2014, cut your parents some slack. This is the year of cutting your parents some slack. Cut your parents some slack. If you say no, you'll be homeless. Go ahead, keep shouting it out. <laughs> you do know it's an option to live in our house, right? You do know we don't do time, but we put you out once you're over eight. See, in the 70s, once you was eight, you could live on your own. You was, you was able. You could cook. You knew what gas was. You could smell gas. The house didn't blow up. Y'all first generation. What's that smoky thing? It's so funky. Boom, house on fire. You don't even know how to cut the gas off. You know what a gas valve is? You don't even know what the fuse box is. My lights don't work. Well, pop the fuse. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> As parents, you want to have some fun? Just pop the fuses to your children's room and just watch them go crazy. Why do you have heat? I don't have anything. It means it's time for you to move. That's why you don't have that stuff. The timer on your life here has run out. I don't think, I don't think, you know, where are my teenagers? My teenagers, because y'all the ones going through the most. Teenagers, y'all going through the most. Y'all go, y'all going through the most changes because y'all think the world's against you. And, God, no one understands me. Another picture, selfie. <laughs> Look, I'm so sad. Let me ask you something, ladies. If you don't do your lips like that all day, why would you take a picture like that? If you don't walk around with a duck face, why are you going to take a picture with a duck face? That ain't sexy. Nobody looks at a picture. Well, I want that duck. I want that duck. Stop it. Stop it. Plus, we're tired of Instagram. I'm up. Look at me. I just woke up. I'm eating breakfast. Keep that to yourself. Know what your parents want to see on Instagram? I got a job. Let me take care of that electrical bill. Take that picture. Hold the bill in your hand. I got the mortgage this month. We'll make faces. Go on, girl. <laughs> Man, it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's your teenager right here? She a teenager? How, how old are you? 18, because she got her phone ready. Look, she got her look. She got a text. Look, she ready. She got it. Look, she ready to fire it up. I am so angry. Capital letters. You know that's not shouting, right? That's just big letters. That's not shouting. That's just big letters. You know, it means nothing. It means nothing. You got to get in somebody's face. If you got something to say to somebody, get in their face. If you got a friend you don't like, don't say, I'm so mad at you, unhappy face. Yell, 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 yell. That means nothing to me. You got to walk up on your friend. I'm mad at you. 
Now you got their attention. So how, how, how old are you? 18. So 18, you're at the, the in-between age. Like, God, you ever tell your mother, I'm 18, God. I'm not 17 anymore. But there's no difference than last year. <laughs> you thought there was a difference, but there's not. I mean, you're just 18. Hooray. <laughs> you want her to go like this. Oh, you're 18 now. Here, take my car. Matter of fact, take this money because you're so responsible. Do what you want to do. Go out to parties. I know you won't get in trouble. That's what you want, right? It ain't never going to happen. Never, never. We don't trust you. I'm, I'm going to help you out. Your mother can't tell you. When you go places, we follow. When we drop you at parties, we go right around the corner. We stay there. We stay there. Because we know you. And know why we know you? Because you come from her. And when she was 18, she was jacked up too. So it's not your fault. We were jacked up too. It's not your fault. I mean, we lied to you as parents. We lied. We lied and said, when I was your age, I was so responsible. But think, we didn't have FaceTime, so you can't look up our timeline. We don't have no timeline. You can't lie to your children. I never went out to where these pictures come from, Daddy. You got your whole life on the timeline. No one has 100 friends. You don't. You don't want 100 friends. Trust me. You don't want 100 friends. That's a lot of people at Denny's at night. You don't want a lot of 100 friends. The most friends you get is four. That's all you get. And the older you get, the less you need. You don't need four friends. You need one friend who check and see if you had a stroke. That's all you need. <laughs> Just come by the house every now and then, look through the window. Oh, she's down. She's down. You go in, drag the body out, throw in the car, get to the hospital. That's, you just need, you need like a, a survival service when you get old. When you're young, you're like, I just you want to go places. I just want to do so. I just want to be out. I'm so tired of being here. That sound like you? Just, you're bored. You're bored because you don't have a job. Get a job, won't be bored. You'll be flipping burgers or something. You'll be doing something exciting all day. You want some fries too? Oh my God, that's so unique. See, that's. <laughs> and remember now, if you get a job at a fast food place, you don't have to be bored. You, you make it exciting. Now, I got fired from a lot of jobs. You might not can do everything I say, but you can try some of it. Like if you work at McDonald's or work at Burger King or somewhere and people make an order, just give them what you want. When they drive up to the window, I change your order. I don't think what you got was good. Here's what I think. I think this is better for you. I looked at you, I saw your family. Y'all eating way too much. Y'all need some salads. I got some salads up in here and some water. Forget that Diet Coke. I got y'all some water. See how that works out. Now I ask my teenagers, I want to find out what, what makes y'all crazy. What makes y'all mad at us? What do we do to make y'all mad so maybe we can improve? What is it? We don't listen. You have nothing to say. So your parents don't listen to you? Okay, what, what, okay what, where you at? Raise your hand, where you at? So when you're, how old are you? 13. So when you were speaking, what were you speaking about? Were you speaking about, like, how to fix the house and the foundation, paint? I like to help paint. I need to go in here. I like to help remodel. Or were you saying, can I just, can I say something? I just want to go somewhere. Can I say something? And my friends are going to be there. Can I say something? Is that what you were saying? Yeah, that's why we didn't listen. <laughs> it didn't help us. You want us to listen to you? Start off. You got to suck up to your parents. That's your job as a teenager, to suck up to your parents. Y'all don't even know how to get stuff. This is the first generation, they don't even know how to go to a party. You come home and you're vacuuming when your mother come home. I fixed everything, everything's clean. Really? Yeah, there's a party, I don't have to go. I mean, a lot of my friends will be there, but I don't have any friends, I'm by myself. Girl, no go, really? Okay. That's how you get out the house. But they came home, your room was dirty, everything was nasty. You didn't wash any dishes, and then you expected you were going to go somewhere. And then when you didn't go out, you're like this. God, I hate it here. I hate it here. I'm going to tell every teenager a secret. We hate you being here. We... You didn't know that? Oh, my God. We hate it so much. We liked you as a child. We like you as a child. I love you, mommy. I love you, money. And then you turn 14, like, oh, I got to get her out. That's why you have four or five children. I hate the two older ones. I need a new one to love. I need, I got to start all over. I got to get these two out. I need to love somebody for eight more years. At 14, you, you have a boyfriend? You ain't ready. You ain't ready. She has a boyfriend? How old is she? Uh oh. You got, she's angry. Hold up. I got an angry mother. I got to, I got to fix something. She's about to kill a child. Let me, let me get this. Say what now? 
tell the 15 year old boys, the, I'm going to tell you something, I don't know if you know this, boys ain't chasing girls anymore. Have you gone to high schools? Boys are scared to death. <laughs> boys are sitting in the classroom. Can you just wait to the class? I'm so scared of the girl. The girl's outside. Come on. The little girls are moving faster. The dudes are just trying to hang on for their life. Everybody here with a son knows what I'm talking about. Your son running home. Mom, don't open the door, no man, what happened? There's a pack of wild women, a pack of wild women. <laughs> See, the reason I'm gonna tell you this, at 14, no, you're not ready to be married, you're not ready to have a boyfriend. Look, look, at, these, look at these parents, look at your parents. Look how messed up they look, look at them. Look what love did to them. Love sucked the life out of them, look at them. You're not ready to have your life sucked out yet. Look at these parents. Look at them. Because that's what real love is. That fortune of love ain't love where you hold hands and love you and miss you and miss you. Love is what? What? I heard you earlier. I heard you earlier. That's love. That's, that's real love. That's grown-up love. Did you just leave me? I didn't think you was going, so I left you. There's a father walking on the highway now. I ain't gonna make it. That's real love. Parents are in pain. Because think about it. You live with somebody 20, 30, 40 years. Back in the old days, people used to die at the age of 20. So the most you got was four years with somebody. Love is strong. But now you live in the 80, 90. That's too long. That's too long to be with somebody. You both wake up, you're still here, I didn't die, didn't die. How you like that, didn't die. Why don't you die, no, why don't you die, I won't die first, you'll die first, no, I won't die first. When you get old, you play games with it like you're dead. Ha ha, still alive. <laughs> Little surprise, love games, that's love games. It's, you look at your family, some of your kids are looking at your family and think your family's messed up, your family's dysfunctional. Every family is dysfunctional. Every family is jacked up. Every family is jacked up. That's God's way. God said, I'm going to give you family so the way you messed up your parents, they'll mess you up. That's the circle of life. That's why grandparents can't wait to have grandkids and watch you suffer. Aha, I got one just like you. Don't bring him over here. I already had one. Don't bring him by here. Some of, my, some of my folks here, grandparents, we thought we were going to be going places at our age, didn't we? We thought we were going to travel, have a Winnebago, and we're still raising our kids. We, we still got people at the house who are 36, 37 years old. You're looking at them, they're eating cereal. Aren't you ashamed? Why would I be ashamed? I like Frosted Flakes. It's, 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 it's a strange time. We didn't know it was going to be this way because... We, we messed up, my generation messed up because we thought our parents were wrong and we thought we were going to raise our kids different like this. I'm not going to be like my mother and father. I'm going to get my kids stuff they need. I'm not going to deny them stuff. Then you realize, ooh, I should have denied some of that stuff. Because that's the key to being a good parent. Being a good parent means your kids hate you. You've done your job as a parent. When your, your kids look at you, God, I can't wait to leave. Don't make promises. That's your job. As a parent, I've, I've seen girls whose mother's mother, me and my daughter are best friends, whose best friend is 50. <laughs> She's 15 years old, your best friend ain't supposed to be 50. That's a strange relationship. And then some of the women, y'all working out so hard now that people go, people think my daughter and I are sisters. She's gonna need therapy for the rest of her life. <laughs> if a 15 year old look like a 50 year old woman, that's a jacked up child, don't do that to her. Don't try to outdress your daughter. Plus, I learned, I'm 57 years old now, when you get in your 50s, you're finally free. Because you don't care about nothing. You don't care. You don't have to do anything right. You can park and handicap and just get out. I ain't handicapped. <laughs> you 50. Say something to me. Say something to me. You don't care. You go to a grocery store. Eight items or less. I got 20. <laughs> Sir, only eight. We'll do eight at a time. Just do eight at a time. <laughs> I'm not getting in that long line. I'm not going over there. I got a bad back. I'm lucky I made it to this spot. Most of the time in your 50s, you just think about sitting down. Where's a chair? Where is there a chair? There's no chairs, we can't go. We can't go, there's no chairs. 
I can't stand up. You know my toe is messed up. I got that bunny that's kind of creeping up on me, and that little toe that's trying to get out the shoe. He's trying to bust out the shoe. <laughs> so you're 18. You have no pain. You can wear shoes that don't fit. You, see, you're starting early at a young age. You wear clothes that hurt because that's what women do. They wear clothes that hurt. Oh. He's got three more years. This will be his chair. <laughs> so enjoy these three years you got left, pimp preacher. How's he gonna bring me a chair and he had that polyester suit on? <laughs> Looking like Andy Gibb. <laughs> this is a nice chair though. See, this, this feels good. Cause your feet aren't all the way on the ground, which means you can get up. You don't wanna get too comfortable. When you fit you, you want to be able to like, because you can't just jump up there's a fire. Like, first you go like, is it really a fire? Because I'm not going to get up. It's just, <laughs> is it just an alarm or is it a fire? I'm not getting up unless I see some smoke or feel some heat. I'm not getting out this chair. <laughs> it's hard, man. It's, we didn't, young people, we didn't want to break down. We didn't ask to break down. We just broke down. It's not our fault. How many people here are 50 with no children? Look at them. They're not broke down. No wrinkles in their face. They got brochures. They're going places next weekend. They go places. When you have children, your bones break. You get brittle. Calcium is sucked out your body. Things happen. You don't have wrinkles because you're old. You have wrinkles because you've been screaming for the last 25 years. <laughs> your face stays like this. Say, what? God, what? Where's your brother? Where's your brother? What's his name? What's his name? What's your brother's name? <laughs> you forget your children's name. And then you sit there, I can't believe you forgot my name. I forgot I had you, but. <laughs> but here you come, it's Christmas. I, I, I think it's time for us to get more realistic. A lot of us are, are in debt because we bought too much stuff for other people. Think about it, your kids got clothes, you wearing the same sweatsuit. And your kids, mom, why you keep wearing the same sweatsuit? Because you got clothes, that's why I got this sweatsuit. Remember, it's our money, it's our house. Take it back. This is the year 2014, we take our stuff back. We take our house back. We take our stuff back. We should be the ones in the house laughing. Oh, look who's here, ha <laughs> ha. You hungry? Well, you have no money, I guess you can't eat. That's, <laughs> see, they just assume they're gonna eat. And, then, and I don't understand this generation. How do you get allergic to peanuts? Well, nobody allergic to peanuts in the 70s. Are you ate with peanut butter and jelly? How are you going to be allergic to peanuts? You would have died in the 70s. That's all you ate was peanut butter and jelly. Your father wouldn't be let you be allergic to peanuts. You allergic? Eat it. Get over it. I can't breathe. I'll whoop you. Die on me. Die on me. See what happened. Die on me and see what happened. What no kids allergic to peanuts back in the 70s? Where did that come from? What is all, what, all this new stuff? I can't take whole grains. I can't have grains. I can't have grains. I can eat kale. Kale. I want a sandwich. I mean, I know for our health. I know for our health, we're supposed to eat right. I know we're trying to live and eat right. But you ever notice when you eat right, you ain't happy? <laughs> when you eat wrong, you're happy. That's why I call it a happy meal. Come get this happy meal. <laughs> come. You're going to die, but come, come. Supersize it. Sus supersize your happiness. Be twice as happy as you're going to be when you come out. We got any vegetarians in Louisiana? Is that a law? You can't be a veg You can't. You got to eat some kind of meat down here. You can't be a vegetarian in Louisiana. Can you see going in the restaurant? I'm a vegetarian. Well, you got to get the hell out. <laughs> get the gun, Jay. Get the gun. We got a vegetarian up in here. <laughs> Your food is still moving down here in Louisiana. Y'all got... Y'all got stuff in gumbo. What's that? That's the sauce. That's the sauce. Kill it. Kill it for it get you. Kill it for it get you. <laughs> I remember my first time. See, I, I've been to Shreveport and I've been to New Orleans and I've been all over uh, Louisiana. I had never been to Lafayette. That's the whole. That's 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 real Louisiana. That's someone should have told me. Once you go across that bridge, be careful. I went, when I went to Lafayette, Louisiana, there were no animals in the street, no dogs, no birds. There was nothing. There was no birds. That was called Boudin. If it's walking around, 
That was Boudin. That's Boudin. Every dog's saying, Boudin, come here, Boudin, come here, Boudin. I was going to leave across the bridge. There was a dog around the corner with three legs. Psst, psst. I got to get to New Orleans, man. I can't stay here. <laughs> and that's where I met my first Cajun people. It's neither French nor English. Yes, there it is. It's not French. It's not English. It's gibber French. It's and I was trying because I didn't want to insult the people because I didn't want to get killed. So after the show, a bunch of them came up to me. Sinbad, we're gonna put that down down. Sinbad gonna put that down. And I messed up, I said yes. Next thing I was one of them swamp boats. Wee! <laughs> and then them gator boy, like I got the two fingers, like that, yeah, yeah. They gonna kill me out here, they gonna kill me. I'm gonna die in the swamp, I'm gonna die. Then when they got through, take me through the swamp, because they party hard, they, they, they party, but they party in the woods. I thought they were taking me somewhere to kill me. I said, oh Jesus, they gonna kill me, oh Jesus. They're, they're right there, we gonna run from somebody here. And then I saw lights, oh they gonna burn me. They gonna cook me, I'm booting, I'm booting. Also him. And I'm going to tell you something about Cajun music. Even if you don't like it, it possesses you. I was in the corner. This girl started dancing with me. She was sweating. She was beautiful. Then she turned around. She had one tooth. I said, So I tried to hide the rest of mine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My man laughing because he knows it's true. <laughs> Little dude said, yeah, man. <laughs> but the thing was, but good people, they're just good people. You, just, you don't know, you just, it's like, okay, like Daryl from Walking Dead. Who watched Walking Dead? See, those who don't watch Walking Dead, y'all gonna die because y'all don't know what zombie y'all. So you need, these are educational shows. These aren't just TV shows. These are, because zombies are real and vampires are real. And you gotta know the difference between a, a zombie and a drunk. See, we know y'all be somewhere in a parking lot and see a dude walking like that, think he's drunk, that's a zombie about to eat your face. Those of us who watch Walking Dead, we know there's five more around the corner and you gotta be quiet. You see, in real life, would I hang with Daryl? No. But when zombies come, Daryl's my boy. That's, you want to do that can kill squirrels and cook it? That's my friend. That's my best friend. Daryl, Daryl, you gonna get some squirrel? Daryl, love you, Daryl. You my man, you my man. One, two, take that. <laughs> They're real vampires now. I know 18 year old right here. What's your name? Huh? Rihanna, you watch Twilight and the vampire shows like vampire, you watch that? I know, because they you know, you watch vampires, like diaries, and vampires go, who go to high school. Vampires don't go to high school. Vampires don't go to high school. Watch Dracula. You want to understand vampires? You watch old school. Vampires don't walk during the day. You can't just make up stuff. You can't just change the rules and put a ring on a vampire cell. He can walk during the day because he got a ring. You can't just change rules. Vampires don't go to high school. He's 100 years old. If he ain't graduated by now, why is he still in high school? Just get your GED and get out. Just get out. <laughs> there are werewolves. There are werewolves. And most people, see, you seen one? <laughs> Family member, my bad. <laughs> there are werewolves, but nobody needs to die from a werewolf. People die because they stand there. Listen to me. They stand there. You ever watch a werewolf movie? And the werewolf starts changing, and the person, oh my God, John, 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 John. Run. If you're standing with one of your friends and his wrist break, just go. Just go. Maybe he's not a werewolf. Maybe he got brittle bones, but don't stay around. If I'm hanging with you and a nose hair pop out, I'm out. I'm sorry I left you. I thought you was a werewolf. I can't get killed. I believe in stuff like that. I believe in stuff like that. You have a boyfriend? You're 18? No boyfriend? You're not ready? It's a lot of pressure. 
Boyfriends, a lot of pressure. Girlfriends, a lot of pressure, too. See, girlfriends aren't as much pressure until they become wives. Because when you have a girlfriend, they set you up. They make you think that they love you and, and you're going to be in charge of stuff. So when you date, women are so good at like, oh, whatever you want to do. What do you want to do? You know, whatever you want to do. I just like being with you. I like being with you. As soon as you get married, you know what? I'm tired of this. I, I have to change who you are because you bother me. You seriously bother me. That's why no man is ready for marriage. Like, I thought you loved me. I set that up. That's just a setup. I'm making the best of a bad situation. That's what I'm trying to do right now. But I think the, the, the problem is because men don't understand what women want. And women don't understand what you want, you'll never get. So I'm going to help you all tonight. I'm going to help you understand what I'm saying. Because men are so basic. We are so basic. It makes no sense to a woman. We are so basic. Women don't understand. This is two men talking. You going to the game? Yeah. That's it. No more questions. That's it. We don't bother each other. We don't, that's it. This is you talking to your wife. You just come home from work. She's like this. You want to go to the movie? Well, let's go. You sound tired. No, I'm cool. Are you mad? No. Forget it. I want to go now. Like, what was, what was that? What, what was, now she's mad for five days. Look, right here, point right here, right here. Living the dream, ain't you? Just living the dream, living the dream. <laughs> Look, the son pointing at the mama. That's mama when she hollers at daddy. Oh, I love the children. The children are so honest. My daddy's scared of my mama. How old, how old is your son? See, he's at the age right now, him and the mom are tight. When he's seven, him and the mom, he tells mom secrets. Your mom, the, why is this woman sitting here? Who is this woman? Huh? Sister. Oh, God, Louisiana. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, okay. I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. It's Christmas, you know, but you got to go to another city. There's other women. You can't, you can't just settle for family, man. You got to just... <laughs> So this is your sister, his sister. Do y'all have a reality show? Guess who we are? <laughs> so that's your little brother. That's your little brother. That's your boyfriend. Okay, because I'm trying to figure this out. Cause dude, you could have been like a son, her son. She had you when she was one. I don't know. I couldn't get in. So that's your boyfriend. How old are you? How old are you? 19. How old are you, man? You're seven. So there's that 12 year gap. Oh, birth control. <laughs> Should've got fixed, man. I tell you, that don't work. The pills don't work all the time. Oh, one day she looked at you. Guess what? I'm pregnant. Oh, God. Oh, joy. God gave us another one. Gee, oh, God. That's great. I'll be 95 when he graduates high school. Yeah. That's just great. I can't wait to play with him for the next two years while I can still can. See, that's like people do in Hollywood, like Steve Martin is like, what, 75? And got a 30-year-old wife, and he has his first child. He's 75. So you know what that means? He has to leave a videotape. I'm probably dead. <laughs> and you're in third grade. I want to tell you things. I loved you. I want you to know I loved you. <laughs> so, man, it's a 12-year age. Dude, this is great. Your sister drives and everything. Dude, and she got a boyfriend. You know you can make money in this situation? All you gotta do is tell the boyfriend secrets. She'll pay you to shut up. <laughs> no, sell secrets to the boyfriend. Like when the boyfriend comes by, he's different. Who's that? <laughs> little stuff like that, little stuff like that will get you paid. You have your own car by the time you're 14. <laughs> now, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, ladies, I want to do this with y'all. Any question about men, any question about your boyfriend or man, something that drives you crazy, I'll fix it. 13 seconds, that's what I do. I fix stuff. Anybody, any woman, some of your man does drive you crazy. Shout it out. Any woman. Why don't men have common sense? Why don't men have common sense? We don't need it. You talk for us. <laughs> I have no sense now. I have no sense. You are my sense. You are my sense. You are my star. You are my north star. You are my star. Huh? Why can't he load the dishwasher? Because he don't have to. You get pissed and you do it. I'm sick and tired. Just this, this the last time. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry. Your fault. 
What else, ladies? Yes. How come we aren't sensitive? Like, why don't I cry more often when you come in? <laughs> we mean, we mean sensitive, huh? You said you, you, you told me your dad just died. What did, what did he do? Oh, you made that up. So your dad didn't die. God, what's wrong with you? There's something else going on here. This ain't about sensitivity. He better watch you. You just died. No, I'm right here. Act like it. How, how come men don't want to ask you any questions about you? Because I don't need you. You already told me everything I needed to know. You don't leave me room to ask you any questions because you come in the house. Guess what happened to me? Guess how I feel. Huh? How can we what? Why do we watch TV? Because I bought one. This threw you off. You saw that TV. There it goes. Turn it on again. He turned it on again. Every day he turns that TV on. Did you think the TV would just sit there? And the family would get together. We think we'll watch it. Let's watch Thursday. Let's... Do you buy shoes and put them on or do you put them in the closet? Not now. Not now. Not today. Not wearing no shoes today. Why do, how come men won't change? Why do we cheat? Same reason women cheat. Both kind of the same. The reason, the thing is, why do you cheat and why would you let them back? See, men going to be sensitive on this one. Now you stop a man from cheating, you shoot at him. Don't kill him. Shoot at him. This is Louisiana. Y'all got guns. Everybody got a gun down here. Everybody got a gun in the truck, in the boot, in the car, in the baby blanket, in the baby seat, in the car seat. You don't have to kill him just when he's with the other woman. I got to go. I think I got to go. Sounds like my wife's gun. That sounds like my wife's gun. One whiz by shot changes everybody's life. <laughs> what else, ladies? Video games. So what's your question? He plays video games a lot? He's home, right? Duh. Why don't you learn how to play? That's the problem. You won't learn to play. You just sit there. How long are you going to play? How long are you going to play? Why don't you play with me sometime? You ever notice when he's playing video games, you bug him? He starts killing more people? That's you. You better learn to fight back. <laughs> huh? Why is he always in your business? Your boyfriend? He's your boyfriend. You want him to leave? Hold up. <laughs> She's not ready to have a boyfriend. I, th I don't think she understands. Why are, you come Why are you calling me? I'm your boyfriend. Good. Maybe you need to be by yourself. Why don't you just break up? It's long distance. Oh, he's with somebody else when he called you. He's putting time in. Hold up, shut up. Hey. I'm sorry about being in your business. Shut up. Yeah. So you, really, you got another boyfriend here, right? Tell the truth. Huh? To be honest, you're lost. So why'd you start with to be honest? Why'd you start with? That's what men do when we lie, to be honest, honestly. Honestly, do you want honesty? I mean, you want me to tell the truth. Do you want, honestly, honestly, to be honest. I, I'm not drinking anymore, to be honest, to not lie. I mean, if he bothers you, why you still date him? That's kind of crazy when you think. Yeah, you just realize I have a problem. See, when you say it out loud, how crazy it sounds? Damn, I'm crazy. I have a boyfriend who ain't here that bothers me. When you do, you, do you really have a boyfriend? Do you see him? Do other people see him? When you're with him, do other people speak to him? Or is it just you seeing? Because that's something else. I mean, I'm not. But you might want to talk to somebody and bring him with you when, you, when you're talking to him. <laughs> huh? 
What the what? We didn't. I told you everything I felt. We just don't have as much as you. That's what y'all don't understand. You said, tell me how you feel. I'm hungry. That's all I got today. That's all I got. I'm, I'm. Thank you. They don't understand. You think we're holding something in because y'all let so much out. We don't have like you. You, you guys are like, oh, you know what? I just, I need to talk. Can I talk? Can we? That's, you know what, you know what scares a man? When a woman walks in the room, can you turn the TV off? Can I say something? Oh, God. Oh, God. Here it comes. So now I have to, I have to create a feeling because you can't believe I have none. So now I got to make up stuff. How do you feel? Uh, I feel blessed. Um, I was lost. I was lost. And now I found. I was blind, but now I see. <laughs> Why do men snore? Because you suck the oxygen out of my life. I have no oxygen left in my area. <laughs> Think about it. Women don't get sleep apnea. Only married men get sleep apnea. Only married men, because he tries to kill himself at night. <laughs> Put this mask on. You ain't going to die on me. This house is not paid for. You wear this mask till this house is paid for. And then you do what you want to do. Why what? Why do men laugh? Why do men lie? Because you ask questions. <laughs> men lie to survive the relationship. I'm not talking about cheating. Y'all think it's about cheating. I'm talking about just everyday life. Did you get enough to eat? Oh, could I have more? We, we, we lie to survive the relationship because the truth is not, okay, how many women want the truth no matter what? You want the truth no matter what? Really, you want the truth no matter what? Have I gained weight? If someone asks you have they gained weight, they know they already did. They're just trying to get you to co-sign. Skinny people never go, am I fat? You weigh 12 pounds. Have I gotten fatter since you met me? No, but your clothes are getting smaller. You got to quit washing them with that hot water. See, the one advantage women have, y'all can be brutally honest. I wish I could be the wife in a relationship. Women will buy you a gym membership for Christmas. Look, you're gaining weight, and I'm not down with this, and you need to go to gym because you're getting fat. And you'll say something, you, you want one too? Why would I need one? Because I need a ride. Maybe you could go with me and drop me off sometimes. Now, how old are y'all right here? Right here, how old are you too? Yes. How old are you? 17. You hope. 17. You have a boyfriend? It's your birthday? Oh, happy birthday. Oh, there she goes. Oh, parents, don't do it. Don't, oh, you embarrassed me. You pointed me out. It's just hard to be 17 and have parents love you. I know it's so gross that they care about you and are proud of you. And you just, you hate that, don't you? Because you're 17. Just, God, don't touch me. Don't be around me. It's my birthday. Just say it. And then one day you wish we did and we'll remember what you said. I love you so much. Well, no, we're not falling for that. No, really. You're just trying to move back in. We ain't falling for that. <laughs> so you have a boyfriend or anything? Did you have a boyfriend? Have you broken up with anybody yet? Nobody? Have there been somebody you liked, but he didn't like you back, and you used to see him in the hallway, and you go, oh, my God, I can't breathe. Oh, God, I can't breathe. That's called bronchitis. <laughs> and it's not the boy. It's not the boy. It's bronchitis. Get an inhaler, and you'll get over it. And sometimes I know your parents, you think your parents are stupid. I know you think, we, I know kids think their parents are stupid. We only made it to 60 because by luck. But sometimes we know stuff and we can't say it to you because you'll get mad and we got to let you bump your own head. So like when you break up with a dude that we know was no good, then you come home, guess what? We broke up. We got to fake it. Oh, oh God. Oh, I thought that was going to last forever. Was... <laughs> and inside we're laughing. I knew he wasn't going to make it. But we, you know, we have to, we have to, we have to be the caring parent. So sometimes lie to us, we lie to you. Act like you like us sometimes. You know when you were a little kid and we put your picture on the wall? That was the ugliest picture. And we let other people see it. What is that? Don't say nothing. I thought it was a frog, it's a horse. Just say it's a horse. 
Because this is the generation, this is the first generation, we're not honest with our children. Like, they got basketball teams where everybody wins. Everybody's a winner. Everybody gets a trophy. Everybody's a winner. No, someone sucked. Someone on this team sucked. That's why we came in last place, because we got some people on this team that can't play. You got to be honest with your children. My dad was honest with me. When I got cut from a team in eighth grade, I came home crying. Dad, they cut me because they want to win, son. <laughs> but our kids, we can't lie to them. They're like this. You, you, quit telling your kids you can be anything you want to be. If you can't do math, there's a lot of stuff they can't do. <laughs> the only reason we have that first week of American Idol because some parents have lied to their children. Ain't nothing worse than see a child can't sing, sing hard. Some whoop! And then the judges, you can't sing. I don't care what you say, I'm gonna chase my dream. That's a nightmare, that's not a dream, you got a nightmare. What else, ladies? Men don't hate children. Wait, does, he, does he hit them with cars? Does he drive down the street? Look at that kid. Got him. That's hate. I mean, I hate Justin Bieber. I hate him. He's a child. But I mean, other than Justin, look, look at her face. Don't hate Justin. Don't hate Justin. He's just going through things. I hate him so much. I want to take him to Lafayette in the woods and drop him off. I can't wait till a Cajun walk up. What the hell we got here? <laughs> baby, baby. <laughs> Put him in the net, take him. Boudin. <laughs> he just irritates, he's irritating. He's irritating. He's a white kid from Canada. Stay white Canadian. What are you trying to do? Stop, stop, stop. You're not even from the hood of Canada. How are you going to be from the hood here? <laughs> what are you doing, man? And the world is changing now. You're, you're lucky. Your generation, the world has changed. See, my generation, we came through a lot of stuff, racism, ageism, sexism. Now, this young generation is coming up, and they're mingling. Because remember, all of a sudden, black and Spanish people, we started moving into white neighborhoods, and, and we started mingling. And now, all of a sudden, everybody's becoming the same thing. Because, you know, black people, we just racist as white people. We, we are. When our kids bring somebody else home, we're like this. Oh, what's that? that? <laughs> That's Marcel. And where are you from, Marcel? Lafayette. No, where's your family from originally? <laughs> but what happens is now the mixing, which I think is good, but they're having children, and we don't know what these kids are. I saw some stuff in the street. What the heck? <laughs> what is that? That's the other. Check that box. Check that box. <laughs> Even the kid looked at me, I don't know why. <laughs> and then you got grandparents who are racist, but they're trying to love the child. And like, we love him, we ain't gonna take him outside during the day. <laughs> cover him up, cover him up, cover him up. I'm gonna take him outside, cover him up. All the friends, what is that? We don't know. We love it. We're gonna wait till the sun go down, we're going home. So now the world's kind of trying, I think people are just trying to get together. It's, it's a crazy time right now, just America. Plus, we don't got so caught up in different Republican, Democrat, it's about people. I know it's one thing, if you car break down, it's a snowstorm, I don't care who come up, what's up, Cajun brother? Nice truck, you got a rope on that? Could you? Got some boot hand for you. It's just the world's got to quit hating on each other, man. Got to quit hating. I ain't got time for all this hate. I don't have time for foolish people. I don't have time for that, man. You got enough problems just trying to maintain a relationship. It got, it's, your house is enough issues. Everybody's house is enough issue. Just deal with your house and your children and your crazy child. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you something too. Some of you kids have been diagnosed with ADD, ADHD. I have ADHD, they had no name for it. So don't let that throw you off. There was no medication for kids like me come up in the 70s. It's called go outside and play. That's how we medicated. So if you think you got ADHD, just go outside, run around for no reason in humidity. It changes everything. 
My father was smart enough to realize this boy got issues. He can't stay with us forever. We got to teach him to fit in society. So when I would go to school, he showed me how to get my energy level down. He said, okay, you chase the car and try to catch it. And I chased the car. So when I got to school, I was so tired, I could fit in with the other children. I didn't realize what he was doing, but he was using psychology to make me fit. Yeah, I heard voices, but my father taught me, don't talk to him. As long as you don't talk to him, we don't have to medicate, and we save money. Most people that are real creative have ADD and ADHD, which means you can't focus on nothing. And all you parents with children with ADD, stop it. We can't focus. Give us nine things to do. Don't give us one. I want you to paint the house and vacuum and go outside and park the car. Give us a bunch of stuff, and it calms us down. You can't say, wash the dishes. I can't, oh, ooh, look outside. I see the window. I, see. I got outside and I chased the dog. I forgot I was washing dishes. I can't, my mind can't focus. And if you put the kid on medication, the worst thing to do is to medicate a kid with ADHD because now he's in the classroom. Oh, he's doing much better. It's called heroin. That's what that is. Just let them run around. Go outside and play. I know for young people that sounds crazy. He don't know what I'm talking about. We used to go outside during the day. I know it sounds insane. I know this sounds crazy to you. But we used to go outside for no reason. For no reason. Other than because your parents said, get out my face, get out my face, get out my face. So you went outside not to die. You went outside to live. And the only rule was come back home when the street light come on. That's the only rule. That's the only rule we had. They didn't want to know about you almost dying. They didn't want to know about how stupid you are. They knew you almost killed yourself the way you came home. Hey, Mom, I love you so much. Where's your bike? Oh, that's never coming back. There's some things you don't want to know about your children. This stuff you just want to know until, like, when you get 30 and 40, and you tell your parents, remember the time I couldn't find my bike? That's because it was on top of a train. When I went off this bridge, I tried to land on this train. I represent hope to your children who look lost. How many of y'all got a kid right now? He ain't gonna make it. <laughs> y'all one like that? Ain't gonna make it? I represent this hope. I used to tell my father, my father, what are you gonna do with your life? Act stupid? I said, yes. <laughs> and I found a way to be stupid and get paid. <laughs> See, there's hope. And then when you are stupid and get paid, your parents talk different on TV. He was always gifted. He was always creative. He had his own way of doing things. He had his own way of doing things. He once jumped off a bridge with his bike. It was so crazy. All you got to do is make it. That's all you got to do, and all is forgiven. And sometimes we just, as, as kids, we just have issues. We just, we can't help ourselves, and sometimes our parents don't understand because this is what God does. He gives you six kids. They come from your DNA, and none of them are like you, and they're not like each other. And you're like, God, what's that about? I'm paying you back. I gave you six. All of them crazy. Every last one of them crazy. That's payback for what you did. But my father was smart. My father played psychological games. There were six kids in my family. He put a picture of seven children on the mantle. I said, Dad, who's he? He didn't make it. Everybody's not going to make it in this family. And he looked just like me. He looked, and there was no Photoshop back then. That was a real picture. What's the hardest thing about being 18? What's the hardest thing? Living on your, are you on your own right now? Oh, so you, you heard. You heard living on your own. Are you trying to live out on your own? It's, it's, look, it's hard now. See, back in the day, there was jobs. You, look, you know what rent was in the 70s? $160 a month, utilities paid and furnished. $160 a month. You can't get Jordans for that much. You can't get the shoes to get out your house. So know what the key is? You got to find a rich boyfriend. Huh? Get a rich boyfriend. You don't have to love him. You can learn to love. See, ask these women over 40. When you first get, I just want to love somebody who loves me. When you get to be 50, I need somebody with insurance and a car and a house. I'll, I'll learn to love y'all. We'll help each other out. You'll fix my teeth. I'll, I'll cook. See, the worst thing at 18, I know you want to you love somebody, you know, you have no money, and he has no money. That's crazy love. 
All you have is love. And you're sitting outside, Denny's looking at the window. I wish we had money too. <laughs> let one love, let one work. That's the way it always works. Let one love, let one work. But it's hard. Get, so you try and go on your own now? You try and move out? You trying to save some money up? You working right now? You got a job? That's kind of how it works. Um, I think you're missing a key part here. You want to move out, you want money, and you can't figure out where that money comes from. Like, Mom, is the money in your purse? No, it's, it's other places. You know what you got to do to help her, Mom? You got to go, like, to McDonald's and let her out and then back away and leave her there because you already filled out the application. That's all you got to do. Just, that's what my dad would do. My dad would just drop me off. You're working. You got a job. I didn't apply. I did. You're good. <laughs> See, this is the generation that everything is so picky. Like, even if you go to a fast food place, you can't just order a hamburger. Like, uh, I have a hamburger. I know, a hamburger with no bun on top, one with no bun, one with just a little ketchup, one with a Coke with five ice cubes. That's your kids. My dad, four cheeseburgers. Dad, I don't like cheese. Well, give me three cheeseburgers. Okay. Okay. I'll eat it. I'm lactose intolerant. Deal with it. Deal with it. Crack your window. Crack your window if you're lactose intolerant. And now they got two windows at McDonald's because the kid can't take the order and take the money. Oh no, you can't do both. One takes the money and one takes the order. You ever messed up and forgot to order something and get to the one that's giving the food? Can I get some fries? Oh God, I'm not supposed to take money. You're gonna have to go back around, I can't do it. <laughs> they can't handle it, man. So teenagers, what else, what else bothers you about us? Today is Amnesty Day. You get to speak up. Who, this a, this a child or the mom? You're the child? You sound older. <laughs> how, how old are you? Huh, you're 20? You live at home? Who's stubborn? <laughs> you just won't leave, that's how stubborn you are. <laughs> I'm not leaving this. <laughs> I'm trying to get money. Where is it? I don't know. Where. I looked in the mattress. It wasn't enough. So your parents are stubborn? Okay, you went some other place. So you're trying to get out the house, and the, the, your, your boyfriend is the key? You don't do drugs, do you? Because you got to stop right now. You got to stop. So just say no, you can't smoke, you can't smoke dope because you're about a half hour behind. <laughs> See, people will tell you that marijuana won't hurt you. Marijuana is, is, is the drug that won't hurt you. I don't know if marijuana hurt, doesn't hurt you, but it does put you somewhere else. <laughs> One thing you'll never see is people smoke dope and fight. You'll never see they were smoking dope and a riot broke out. That will never ever happen. You might get mad. Hey, you just shut up. <laughs> the only thing that excites you when you smoke marijuana is somebody with Cheetos. Cheeto! Cheeto! He's got Cheeto! So we'll go back to you. So what we were talking about a half hour ago. <laughs> so your boyfriend is stubborn? And how old is your boyfriend? Oh, you're, you're a cougar. <laughs> He's 12, how about him? <laughs> He's like, dear, take me. I'm out the house, dad, I'm out. So, um, what do you mean he's stubborn? Because you're not stubborn. You're giving, right? You're real giving. He's stubborn. Give me an example. <laughs> oh, is that him? <laughs> they both got issues on occasion. So, what, give me an example of his stubbornness. What did he do? 
Oh, that's not stubborn. That's called sanity. <laughs> Quit talking so much. He'll still do more. No, this is, wait a minute. What's your opinion have to do with going through with something? I'm going to tell you something. You, what's your first name? I'm, I'm going to tell you something you probably don't understand. When you ask somebody's opinion, don't mean I have to take it. It's a survey. <laughs> I'm surveying a lot of people. You're not the only one I surveyed. We ask opinion. If I can use it, I use it. If not, I don't use it. So you, you just have such wisdom at 20 that you're throwing gems out. He should just jump at that, right? I don't hear you. <laughs> know what these women are doing now early? They're, they're scaring dudes off at an early age. They're, they're, they're not going to get married. See, our generation, women know how to set you up to get you in. You are so smart. Oh, my God. You know so much. Oh, my God. We get married. You're the dumbest man. <laughs> you don't know how to, you got to switch it. Matter of fact, only women sit around in a group and fight over who got the dumbest man. My man's so dumb. Oh, girl, you ain't seen mine. I have, oh, here comes mine now. Look at this dumb one. Watch this, watch this. <laughs> Men can never talk like that. Men can never sit, man, my wife's so stupid. Ah, ha, 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 ha. The walls have ears. <laughs> I ain't going down because of you. Now, how old are you? 18, look, he put his head down. He's scared now, he's been talking to you. He had the deep voice, I'm 18, man. So are you, are you trying to get out too? You're not, see, he's like, I ain't trying to get out. You're trying to get out, he's like, I ain't trying to get out. I got a good thing going. They got an internet connection. I got a room, I got a TV set, I got cable. Why would I leave this room? See, that's the problem. Y'all gave kids rooms they can't leave. I wouldn't leave that room either at 57. He, my man 12, I ain't gonna leave here. When we were coming up, you went to your room as a punishment. Can you believe that? Go to the room. Oh, God, no. There's nothing in there. Go in there and sit there. You would just sit on your bed because you didn't have a chair or nothing. What time is it? You hear your brother go by. <laughs> I hear you. It was like being in prison. Now you go to the room. Don't come in. It's my room. They have the nerve to get mad when we don't knock. We come in. Ah! Knock, please. Oh, not only am I not gonna knock, I'm taking your door off the hinge. <laughs> knock. This my room. Well, this is my door. You keep your room, I keep my door. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put up some love bees. Let me close these. <laughs> and every girl in here, you need to know something. If you got a journal, we read it. Why would you write that down, that little lock? comes right open, just like that. <laughs> you read my journal. You should be thinking about what you wrote, not that I broke into it. <laughs> I was hoping to have a smart child. Who writes this crap down? Who's Scott? That's a dead man. Who's Scott? <laughs> what else, ladies? Tr what do you mean try? No, he gives it to you. See, you're missing the whole point. Ain't no take. Oh, she paid it? She owns the phone, but who's paying the monthly? She paying monthly? You know how you deal with that situation when she got attitude? You, you find her password, just like you do your husband, and turn it off. And she, she'll sit there. Oh, do you have a signal? I don't have a signal. Maybe it's off. Just turn the phone off. What battle? Ladies, are y'all hearing this? Where's my black mothers? Hold up. <laughs> Let me help you with this situation, this battle. This battle you having. Battle means there's two people fighting. <laughs> this should be only one person fighting in your house. She should be covering up. That's what she does. <laughs> Protect yourself at all times. That's what you got to do as a child. See, you're doing this wrong. If your child is 16, this is power. You have power, you come in the room. Give me a phone. What? And quietly, and smile at me, smile at me. Give me a phone and say, oh, I don't even want it. Say, I don't want it. Thank God you took it from me. Say it to me. Say, thank God you took my phone. That's my father. That's my father. Give me a phone say you're happy. Thank God you took this, daddy. <laughs> You've lost your mojo. You got to get your mojo back. 
You need a mojo, like sitting around the dinner table and my father moved too quick, everybody jump back. I flinched to the day my dad died. When my dad was 80 years old, he tripped. I couldn't catch him because I thought he was trying to get me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry, man. I didn't know what you was doing. <laughs> I'm, having back, I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> you couldn't even, my dad never even raised his voice. My dad had so much power. My dad never raised his voice. My father would ask me to do something one time. Look, I need you to cut the grass. God, I always got to cut the grass then don't, don't cut. Do what you're going to do. Do what you got to do. I'll be back at five. Do what you got to do. I'm going to do what I got to do. Do what you got to do. I had to regroup. You know, I got sickle cells. Sometimes I say stuff. Did I just say something? Did I say something stupid? You know, the only reason I didn't get arrested, the only reason I, I didn't get in trouble with the police, not because I was a good kid, I was more scared of my father than the police. I wasn't scared of the police. I was scared of the police bringing me back to my house. I wasn't scared of the police. Man, if I ever got arrested, I got to tell the police, no, lock me up. You can't take me home. I got to work out. I got to get big. I can't come in the house looking like this. I'm a dead man walking if you drop me off in my yard. <laughs> at 16, she, where was she at? Is she here? Where you at, girl? Raise your hand. Girl, you lucky to be alive. Let me just tell you that right now. You lucky to be alive. So did you, you got an attitude? Because, oh, I like it. This is what you did, right? I paid for this phone. I bought this phone. So mom, this is what you do. This is what my dad was done. Okay, everything you pay for, you get to keep. Everything I paid for, I get to keep. Let's play that game. Let's play for whoever paid for it, get to keep it. So you come down to have breakfast and she get through eating. Mmm, the frosted place was good. What'd you get? Well, call your cell phone, call Tony the Tiger, see if he bring you some. <laughs> your job as a parent is to be sarcastic. See, you're scared to be sarcastic. That's what good parents do. You live for the day your kid go like, God. You want that stupid look. You want this teenager dance. <laughs> you want that. I live for that. Ah! Victory, thank you. You did the frustrated dance. I'm glad I frustrated you. You know you've done your job as a mother when your kids think you're crazy. When your children think you're crazy, you've done your job as a mother. When your kids come home from school and they tell their friends, wait outside, I'll be right back. Because they ain't going to bring you up inside until all this craziness is about to happen in this house. <laughs> you got to go pee? Got to pee? Oh, he's tired, right? We'll wait. Let me wait for you, man. I'll wait for you, man. That's his little brother. I know he's like this. So when you get to the bathroom, you're going to knock your little brother out. Be watch this shit go with him. Because you saw he was mad. You don't make me. Don't say nothing. <laughs> you know that, right? You know it's about to go down, right? They about to go down. They about to think it's going to be a struggle in that bathroom. <laughs> don't you say nothing to mama. You can't keep it. You, you got to teach the young one how to protect himself. There were six kids in my family. My dad gave me a wiffle ball bat. Get him at night. Quick, 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 and run to my room. He's about to get jacked up. Go get it. Get a picture of it on Instagram. <laughs> My man 12, go in there. See what happened. Report back. <laughs> no. <laughs> you never let the older brother take the younger brother. I was the older brother. You can't do that to a child. I used to tell my parents, go ahead, have fun. I got them. <laughs> my, kid, my brother's at the window. Mama, don't leave. Mama, don't leave. Mama, he beats us, mama, he beats us. I killed them, I killed them. I make my brother sit in the trash can until my parents came home. Stay in that trash can until they get back and didn't get out before they got out the driveway. My mother came, how was it? We all had fun. But he paid me back. He got old, he took up martial arts and all that kind of stuff. He hid in the dark one night. I got hit, I know it was him, he didn't ever reveal himself. I got a police report out. I will find out. <laughs> Anything else? From, I don't even know what time it is. Man, oh, it's almost 8 o'clock. Somebody's going to get back across that bridge. <laughs> get scary at night. You got me. You got to keep your dome light on. <laughs> what else? We want to talk about anything. A couple more questions about anything. Take us serious. 
Ho, because your voice, that's why. Ho, 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 calm down, son, calm down. Is that how you normally talk? You're too loud, that's why, you're too loud. Low tones, low tones. So how, where you at, man, raise your hand. How old are you? 16. Is your parents here? She's right there? Oh, so you thought if you set four down, nobody would know that you didn't have a car, you didn't drive here, and you, you basically need a ride home, that you're trying to be, I'm gonna stay four down, but I better keep my eye on her because she will leave me out here in the parking lot. <laughs> so when you say she doesn't take you seriously, okay, when was the last time you were seriously talking to her about something and she didn't take it serious? Did she like, did you say like, I'm 16, I should have a car? <laughs> that ain't serious. <laughs> so you thought that was a serious conversation. Mom, I'm 16 now and I can drive and that's good. And if I have a heart attack, jump on my side, get me to the hospital. So what was the last conversation you had? That you, I tried to get a job. So she said, don't. She said, don't. No, hold up. No, I'm trying to help you out. Because you shouted that out at first. You're trying to get some points. You was trying to get a job. Your mother said, don't you do that. Don't you get a job. You're leaving something out, right? <laughs> like every teenager does. So what happened? Because you needed help to look at the form and say, what's my name? How much of the form did you get through before you needed help? Address, age, what, what things are hidden from you? What things are not revealed to you at your house? You hear what I'm saying? How crazy that sound, what you just said? You know how you get a job? You walk in, hi, I'm here for the job. And you fill out the form. Damn, we gotta, we gotta go back. We gotta have seminars on basic stuff. That's why your mom didn't help you, really? Mom, help me get a job. She said, okay. She meant, I'll take you there once you get it. She meant, she was thinking, I'll drive you. She didn't realize she was going to go like, that's a building where people work inside that building. That's where the jobs are. How many places like that are? They're all over. They're all over Shreveport. If they have neon lights, it's probably a place where you can get a job. So what part are you not understanding? No, no, you, you're not understanding what I'm saying to you. You need to what? You need to go to school board to get a work permit. You're 16. Oh, you want to drive. Okay, let's go back. You want a work permit so you can get a driver's license early so you can drive to work because you want to work so bad. You liar. Your mom peeped that out. Your mom laughed in your face. We're all laughing. Ha, 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 ha. You don't need a car to work. Bike. Bus. Thumb it. Since when is a car a prerequisite for a job? No, I can't be seen on the bike. I got a rep. I have a rep as a broke man. I can't change my rep. Just ride a bike to work. How about this? Try to get a job you can walk to. Look around that's near you. Get one of them places. No, you want to drive, don't you? You just want to get a car, right? No, you get a car, get a job. Yeah, get a job, then get a car. So take a job and then get a car. And get a car you can afford. She can feel like, I want you to have a hoop I want you to have a good car your mom will get you. I want you to have a car that you pray every day we get in. God, please, you know this car. You, you know it better than me. Touch that alternator. Touch that alternator. I can't catch the bus another day, God. I can't. See, y'all want cars. Y'all are a different generation. Y'all want good cars. You don't even know what a raggedy car is. Y'all think, y'all go like this. God, that's a 2010. If it's in the last two decades, that's a new car. That's a new car. If it's got the year 2000 in front of it, you did good. You did good. No, no my dad, my, my, my dad helped me get, this is what I did. I did the same thing you did. I went to my dad and said, Dad, I found this Pontiac GTO convertible for only 300. He said, only 300? It's only, well, let's go look at this car for only 300. I should have known when he was talking what was about to happen to me. We got to the place. He said, this the car? He said, let's test drive it. He said, this, you're right, this is a good car. Pay the man. <laughs> it's only 300, you don't have only 300? 
Are you upset? No, I want to thank you for the lesson. Because you look mad. No, sir, sometimes when I'm happy, sometimes. <laughs> oh, you love my father. <laughs> you need help getting a job? Get out. <laughs> oh. My car, my first car my dad got me, it came from a salvage yard. It, had a, it was a Chevy with a four door. So the door didn't shut all the way, so you had to have, you had to kind of have people hold. When you rode with me, I had a stick with a string. If you're on the right-hand side, help each other. Everybody lock in, don't fall out, don't lock in. <laughs> so when you rode with me, I give out pamphlets, things that need to be done when you ride with me. Everybody has a job to do in this car. <laughs> Whatever you do on this side, don't roll the window down. So y'all young, y'all don't understand, glass used to fall in. You would roll, <laughs> glass, just gone. That's why you kept a wire hanger in your car. And then sometimes they roll up crooked, so now it's at an angle, so you gotta put some duct tape, so this window ain't never going back down. So you don't even know what I'm talking about, do you? We didn't have an air conditioner, we had a thing called vent. It was called vent. If it was 100 degrees outside, it was 4,005 degrees in your car. People would roll the window down because they was dying in the car. It was a two-door, four-seater. You don't know what that means. This is how you get in the back. Okay, get in, everybody get in. Because the seat pushed down the front, everybody climbs over you to get in the back. Ain't no seat belts. Drive careful. <laughs> no power steering. You know what power steering is? When you see a car turn like this, this is the 70s. You got to start about a block back. <laughs> and then let it go and back up. <laughs> You don't know what flooding the car is, do you? You get in the car, everybody, man, don't flood it, don't flood it. <laughs> now you gotta wait 12 to 20 minutes. Just conversing about how stupid you were flooding this car out. Except they had a spray, you could spray in the carburetor to sometimes cheat that. But that's why nobody has an eyebrow from the 70s. Because the flames would come up. But at least we got the car started, that's the main thing. You have no clue what I'm talking about, do you? You know what it is like to have a, a standard, a stick shift, and if the battery's dead, it can still work if you got two friends, because your friend's got to run 20 miles an hour, and you pop the clutch in second. Now, you don't want the dumb one driving the car because he don't know how to pop the clutch right, so you've been sweating, you got the car going 20 miles an hour, and, and now you go flying over the top of the car. What gear you have it in? I don't know. That's what made the 70s fun. Maybe the car go, maybe it won't. <laughs> Every day was an adventure. Y'all just get in, it starts up. You just get mad because you don't have a good stereo. I need a better stereo system in some rims. It was called a hubcap. You might have one, that's all you get. <laughs> just moving around the car so people don't know you just got one. Just. Know what AAA was? Your friends. Oh, and there's no cell phone. When your car breaks down, you just wait till people come. I should have went the other way. <laughs> this ain't making no sense to you, is it? You don't even know what this is, do you? I'm calling somebody. And sometimes that metal part would miss, so you had to, you had to kind of figure, so you might be one number off. <laughs> candy was a penny. A penny, candy was a penny. That's why you couldn't give a kid 25 cents, he died, he OD. <laughs> I stole a dollar from my mother one time, bought 100 pieces of candy. Well, I think it was 100 pieces, because we couldn't do math in fifth grade, because you didn't have to do math in fifth grade back in the day. So I get, give me three now letters, give me three fake cigarettes, three, how much is that? Okay, give me two wax lips and one squirrel, how much is that? Give me one tomic, he's that's 100. Okay. They found me in the alley, foaming at the mouth. I had wax lips on with a little fake cigarette, candy cigarette. And my face was orange from pixie sticks. I was kicking back pixie sticks. They just found me in the alley. 
They took me to the hospital. They said, why is he still, he still got sugar rush? Because they had the candy necklace they didn't see. <laughs> and you didn't get candy from the candy store. You got it from the candy man. Remember, there was a guy in the neighborhood that sold candy who we now know was a child molester. <laughs> but that's why kids was quick in the 70s. Don't let them get you. Look, I want to thank y'all so much for letting me come out and hang out with y'all. Have a Merry Christmas. Have a funky Christmas. Have a Happy New Year, man. Love one another. It's not about toys. It's not about money. It's about hanging out and being around people that you love, man. Y'all take care. What, what? My boy, Simba! That's what it's about right there, young people. Shreveport Bossier, let him know you love him one more time. Come on.